Okay, now we're recording. All right, so <clears throat> let's get started. I have some notes, so okay. So first things first. So I'm going to talk about Clear Cup for an hour, and then I'm going to talk about um, Reckoner for an hour. I guess Reckoner is going to be pretty basic. Um, this map I know pretty well, so it's going to be pretty in depth. Um, oh, let me turn that off too. Okay. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's talk about the mid fight. So. The rollout, obviously everyone probably knows, you can kind of go wherever, but most people just go right. Um, your kind of main objective in this mid fight is to play passive and look for an opening. Um, it's kind of all mids, I guess, but this one especially, there's not like a clear way to take an advantage because there's no like rotation, it's pretty static. So... Essentially, where everyone wants to be is like, Pocket can kind of play like here, or like here. You're looking to like, get some spam on, but not really take damage. Just soldiers in general in this map, you want to keep your health high the entire mid fight, and you don't want to commit to anything first. You always want to be the one following. And uh, it's important as a soldier to know like, how much value that you have in these mid fights because of how you can high bomb. So like there's so many bombs that involve like going off this and you can get, I mean, so much further than I just jumped, but yeah, so high bombs are a huge part of the soldier mid. You're kind of looking to spam. Rummer is normally playing left, whether it's like over here or, uh, here, let me turn on. Okay, so, like, Roamer's generally looking to, like, just scope things out on the left, and, like, Pocket is generally okay to take this height. You're not gonna get super spammed unless the demo is, like, really gonna look at you, so all of this area is generally, you know, pretty okay. You can back up here for a bow. Um, the more important classes, I guess, are gonna be, like, Scout on this mid. So... The two roles are very distinct, and I think the thing that a lot of teams like get wrong with this mid is how uh, kind of to play both roles. So the pocket scout is kind of much more straightforward. You're looking to like stand on this box, or uh, you can kind of like sort of play over here, but it's not really ideal. You're looking to like stand on this box or stand up here and shoot down at stuff, and especially like deny bombers so basically anything outside of like this range you don't really want to waste scatter shots on um and your like main priority is going to be like keeping track of where bombers are coming um generally if a bomber is going deep that's not your responsibility so you should kind of avoid looking at someone who's going to go behind whether it's like back here or back here um unless they pose like a really serious threat um, on flank scout, your job is kind of the opposite. Uh, the really best spot to play, oh, you can't get up this way, is, uh, like up on, I don't know if you have to do this jump, or, oh my god, my movement is terrible. Um, but yeah, you're looking to- that little roof with winger. Oh, okay. Yeah, winger is probably not actually- I wouldn't recommend running winger because of how valuable it is to be able to pistol from here. Like, you can spam people off this roof. Like, you can shoot at- oh my god. You can shoot at the demo man, like, all the way across. Um, which is very valuable if you're, like, even semi-decent at pistol aim. If you can have, like, 40 on the demo, that's pretty good. But your main priority on flank scout is gonna be, like, watching for, uh, bombers to go behind. The, like, whole point of playing in this, like, super passive position is that you, you're, like, guarding this, 
this area like from a deep bomber from like off this tower or off this um, and also it allows you to rotate if they go behind this way you're right here on this pack you're gonna be able to like kill this guy 10 times out of 10 because you're just coming at him from like such an insane high ground advantage so that's kind of how you play scout at like the most basic level is like you're looking for these soldiers and uh, the pockets in front flank scouts playing behind and then on the demo class you're gonna be pretty chill you're looking to not take any damage essentially a lot of this mid is gonna be like exchanging spam so like your scouts taking a lot of damage your soldiers usually are gonna take a decent amount of damage so as a demo you generally just want to chill out back here and kind of just charge your stickies you can kind of sink stuff like here um if you land your sinks there that's pretty good you can trap off like on top of this roof to deny space um another idea is that if your scout is going to play on this roof Something you can do is put stickies like on here so that your so your scout can safely stand here without getting completely dunked on by like a soldier bombing here. So, or like a scout push as well because you can kind of, I mean you can push this. So if you like, you put stickies up here, you know, the scout is basically unpushable. Um... Yeah, and then as medic, you're looking to generally play like in open space because of how good soldiers are on this mid. It's really tough to be uh, just a medic in general on this map, so you really want to avoid like going this way when you're retreating. You kind of want to stay like along these sort of central routes where you have a lot of space to like see stuff coming and surf. The basic. So that's like how each class kind of exists. The basic outline for how you try to gain an advantage is kind of through your demo and through your pocket scout. You're looking to call out damage, uh, whether it's like on the enemy pocket scout who's also looking to play like right opposite of you. Uh, you can spam this guy out really easily. And uh, if you get damage on any of these players, like that's when you want to call some aggression. So. Obviously, like, sometimes you're going to get the damage and sometimes they're going to get the damage on you. So, in the case that you're getting the damage on them, uh, you're looking to kind of walk across with your heels on your scout and, like, have your demo support. Um, you can alternatively also, like, tank your demo across point if, like, your demo is your hard carry or something. That's pretty viable as well. Um... And then once you kind of have some positioning here, uh, you're looking to like take this high ground with a soldier and sort of force them back. So like once you can get a scout, like whether it's your flank scout can rotate like all the way up here or a soldier to land here, this is the best high ground uh, for like actually converting the advantage. So what I mean by this is like if you get soldiers and scouts up here, like, this spot, which is normally, like, quite safe, becomes very unsafe because they can shoot you, like, right here. And you're pretty much, like, owned. You have to leave. So, you're looking to create some kind of space advantage like that and take control of this left house. Alternatively, or, like, in the reverse case, where you're getting damage shot on you, you want to try to defensively hold this air, like, this shack. So... If that means, like, you have your soldier's counter bomb, that's what you want to do, or, like, put stickies up there, uh, your scouts can kind of play away. They don't need to be right. Like, you can kind of fight it from here, and it's not a big deal. And same thing, like, you can kind of be over here and, like, on this box, and you're not really so scared of the spam, or, like, a. Uh, You're not really scared of the damage as a pocket scout because you have so much to play off of. Like, you have this crate, you're really not going to get splashed by any soldiers. And uh, your medic's going to be tanking you pretty much the whole time. So, that's kind of how you deal with it. There's obviously going to be more complex interactions, but a lot of that's going to come down to, like, practice and 
that sort of stuff. So that's kind of how the general mid fight looks. Do you guys have any questions before I go forward with that or with other stuff? Uh, I don't have a question, but Capberg wants you to make him a student. Oh, okay. Give him the student role. That's a good question. Okay. He's a student. Okay, so that is pretty much that. So now I'm going to talk about... Um, sorry, let me pull up my notes. Okay, so I want to talk about if you... So if you win the mid, we'll talk about that first. Um, first things first is I want to talk about forward. Um, I don't like forward, but... It's usually good if you're like really hard stomping, you can continue to stomp like this. So the standard hold is going to be like you get your soldier right here, like watching this left area. You get your other soldier like here uh, or like over here watching main. I think these boxes are better because you have this like angle through here. You can, I think you can like surf this for a while and stand above, but it's kind of more cheese. Um, and then like for scouts and medic, you can kind of play anywhere generally in this yard. And uh, medic can kind of play to leave here. Like as medic, you want to play like here. So you have the soldier that's standing here. You have a soldier here. So you kind of just want to buff these guys and your scouts can play around with the high ground. And then your demo is going to lock down this right door area. So this is pretty much the best, I think, hold that I've seen. But it gets pretty easily broken if you... Uh, you can just kind of rush the demo man here. It's not... Like, the door is not small enough that the demo can realistically hold this, like, by himself. And, like, soldiers can get through, like, jump off this wall. And you can kind of jump off this, too like get in here um and same thing like if you manage to get a soldier through main like you jump here and you jump this demo man like that's how the hold is broken so that is also how you break the hold if if people try to do it against you i don't think it's very good uh for those reasons essentially it's pretty easy to break um so what i recommend instead is okay so <clears throat> there's four situations uh, obviously so they depend on whether you have uber or they have uber so if neither team has uber um you're gonna hold like aggressively you're gonna have your scout play like up here or on this box um you're gonna have your pocket generally play like goodness gracious up here and you can put spam like here or here and then as demo you can kind of stand back here like on the point area usually your medic is going to be around here as well but you want to trap up like this main area especially like you can put traps kind of there's so many props like hide stuff on here and like so many things that you can put traps on and same thing if uh you want to like split your traps up, put four and four. I think this is a pretty good area to put traps as well. You're going to catch people out a lot or like up here. Um, like all of these have lips that you can put traps on. So demo is, is very critical and you can just kind of play passive and watch your traps. That's all you really need to do. So Generally, you're... Oh, and then uh, Rummer is going to play top left, and you're looking to spam down here and not let them get up through here for free. Uh, you also... I didn't mean to fall off. Um, you can, uh, as Rummer, like, s hold this angle, essentially, and then be ready to just, like, back up, and then you're safe back here. You can jump wherever, like, move back and spam wherever you're needed. But it's really important that, as soldiers, you know when you can and cannot die. Um, so that's if uh, neither team has Uber. So if 
they have Uber, there's kind of two situations. If uh, you're going to get Uber soon, you're just going to kite. So if um, essentially you can keep your soldiers in the same locations, keep your like roamer up here, your pocket up here, but with your combo, like you move your scout back to here and you move your demo back to like here. So he can watch these traps still from back here and he can like rotate over here to see kind of when stuff is happening or like listen to the soldier for debt. Um, but you're just gonna back up, give them a little bit of space uh, and then just try to build the rest of your Uber out. So the other situation is if you're not going to get by the time they push. So usually what I, the first situation would be like, if you have like 60 or more and they just get and they're trying to push, you can usually try to build that out, maybe more like 70. But if you have less than 70, then you can kind of consider uh, running a four man instead. So you can use these aggressive positions to facilitate this sack as well. So if they're trying to get in with the Uber, you can just have soldiers like play really close, like choke up really hard to these doors. I'd say just like as a roamer, you can stay up here. Pocket, you can kind of move forward. You can play up here, you can play over here. Or like you can stay back here and then just plan to bomb as they come in. And as demo, you can start to take take the point and stay up here. Like, be really close, be ready to like try to get the drop, essentially. And then uh, flank scout, you can kind of do a bunch of funny stuff. You can like peek this doorway and like get in behind here. Uh, same thing on the right side, if you're... Um, you can run in like behind here, you can go through main. You can do a lot of like cheeky plays, essentially. as a four man so then the rest of your combo you can kind of you can stand in main generally you can stand right here with a scout and just build as they come in and then just walk away and you're gonna be a fine there's pretty much no way that with the the four people playing close that they're gonna be able to get over and like get to you okay so that's if they have uber and you do not so now the opposite if you have uber and they do not there's another two options. So you can kind of, there's two approaches essentially. You can stay active and look to deny the doorways as they try to get in, or you can bunker. And uh, I'll go over bunkering first. I think bunkering is worse. Um, it's kind of hard to pull off correctly. It's a little bit easier to break if not everyone knows exactly what they're doing at all times. But how you run the bunker hold is you put your demo right here. You can trap up a lot of different stuff, but usually it's going to be passive traps. Uh, your medic's going to play here. Usually your pocket scout is out here. Your flank scout is on top, like up here. You have your roamer can kind of play like pretty much anywhere on the map, but like any high ground is going to be good. And then your pocket's job is to stuff this backdoor area and not let them get through here. So I'll talk about how to break that more when we get into pushing. But I don't think it's very good because you can just kind of run people in here, essentially. It's not so hard to get all the way. So like if the scout is playing on that box, you don't have vision of this entire left area. And this allows a scout to get here, unseen, essentially. Before I talk too much about that. So the second part is going to be the aggro. Or... I guess you have, you have like an in-between option. <laughs> um, you can hold your ground and essentially just wait for them to come into you. And just use the uber to do something about the four sack for the, or the four man. Um, this is like generally not that worth it. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would just kind of keep your players in aggro positions, um, but then move your medic and your scout back so that they have to commit over. Um, but my kind of fun play that I think works pretty, pretty well is like, staying really close with your combo 
and taking two soldiers in through this main door and Ubering right in. So generally when teams are gonna four man, they take control of this yard with their entire team and then they facilitate the sack through like here or up top. Generally they're not gonna go from right side, but sometimes they will. I assume you can just bomb your demo like super deep. Anyway, you can just like Uber right in and look for their medic with two soldiers and generally bring a scout as well. And you just have quite the fat Uber into them. So I would only run this like one to two times and save this for like really critical situations. Um, so you have a, like a kind of good consistent weapon that you use. So I would practice this throughout your scrims as well. Um, there's a, another kind of bonus option that you have as well. You can high here with your combo as well. This doesn't work as well because they can push through the this side, the right side, and like they'll spot you really quickly if you're hiding there. You know, they'll they'll get here and they'll see you. Uh, and usually it's going to be flank players pushing here anyway, so like they're looking to get aggro. But sometimes teams will be naive and they'll push their combo up this way, and then you can just run in with a scout and like a demo and just kill them or two scouts. You really have a lot of freedom in what you do with the super. So, yeah, that's not guaranteed to work, but it's kind of a fun thing that you can try out. Um, does anyone have any questions about all of that so far? Like the worst case scenario of agreeing to them, like what I see is just the medic immediately leaving and you kind of getting fucked. I mean, if you get picks, then you're going to be okay. Like, uh, I mean... They have a lot of ways to, like, break the stalemate. I mean, obviously they have the option of four man. Like, four man is just really, really good. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if that's kind of like your base case, essentially, you know, like, as long as you're doing at, like, at the worst, you're getting that scenario, and at the best, you're getting better, then it's still, like, a good play, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, I guess, what I think about all of that. Like, if you were to get a good Uber on that, should you take it one step further and just spawn camp them? Or like, <laughs> no, it's stuck? it's pretty hard to spawn camp on this map. Same thing with the forward hold. It's just so hard to like hold all of these doors when you're here. I mean, they have this shutter and this one. Like, they can just kill you basically, and they're not yeah. gonna have any problems whatsoever. Yeah, so that's that's all I have about um, if you have Uber and they don't. Does anyone else have any more questions? You can ask more questions too, Drew, if you want. Alright, cool. Um, yeah, feel free to interrupt me too if you have questions. It's all good. So, the final case is if you both have Ubers. So... I'll talk more about this later, but generally what they're going to try to do is run a solo uber. The most common thing to do is just take a scout and your medic and do a solo. You run like this and you pop here and try to use into them. Sorry, my mic wasn't working. I was trying okay. to say something. Uh, oh yeah, what's up? Okay, so this is a tactic I did on my old team, but like during mid fights in general, like, it gets really stalemate with the spam, and mm -hmm. medically, there's no real way to create an opening except for one method, and you bring your flank scout on the left close. Wait, what situ is this in when you have Uber and they don't, or...? This is, like, just a mid-fight, or just dry fights, um, and you basically take your demo and you spam out the left side house, and you put a scout and a soldier onto the left house at the same time to try and force picks. Oh, I see. So you mean like holding aggressively like this? Actually, I'm not sure I understand no, like what you mean. No, like on the roof. You jump. Oh, onto oh, the oh, roof. onto this roof. Yeah. Yeah, like you go onto the left high ground. Right there is a scout, like far left. Like here. And then you jump or... onto the roof. Oh, like... yeah, 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 yeah. I'll talk about this more when I talk about pushing. Actually, so uh, okay. we can. 
wait until then, actually. Um, yeah, so the last situation is if you both have Uber, they're going to try to generally run a sack into you, or not a sack, a solo into you. And uh, the only way that you can realistically do anything about this is just holding aggressive, like watching these doors with your scout, and then having a trap. Like, if you put traps here or, like, traps here, like, and you kind of guess, like, one to depth. I mean, you can put something here or, like, on... I don't know, you have a lot of options for a trap as demo, but generally, like, if you're playing back here, and you hear the call that they're coming, like, you can just kind of debt, and then s the best way to counter their aggression is just to try to get that drop, essentially. Um, and then, if they don't try to do something like that, um, so you still want your soldiers to, like, play on high ground, so usually one on right, one on left. Um... So if they don't do one of those two options, you still want to spam and try to get the force as they come in. But while they, they are doing this, it's really important that um, all your spam classes, instead of looking at the uber, which I feel like is a really easy mistake to make, um, instead of looking at the uber, you look at the doors that they're trying to come in through. So if they try to take a solo, obviously they're going to run all the way in. If you just ignore it as soldier, you lock out the other doors. And same thing as the other soldier, you just, uh, goodness, uh, you just lock out, like, these doors. You can actually, like, take some liberty with how close you get, because you, you know, this uber is generally going to ignore you. Um, and then demo, same thing, like, during the uber, you don't have to shoot the scout. As long as you're flash, like, you just trap up, like, either left, right, or main. And you're looking to deny these doors, because the way that you win this post uber is if... They only have two classes in versus your entire team. Like, that's how you're gonna... It's just gonna be an easy dub. Does that make sense? I'll take that... The silence as a yes. Yes. Okay. So, yes. yeah. Lo that's, like, really critical. Just a fundamental thing. Like, don't forget that your job as projectile classes is to lock out these doors. So... That, let me see. Yeah, and as medic, make sure that you keep your demo alive for the same reason. Like, don't let uh, the scout kill your demo. Because if your demo can't lock down these doors, then you're going to have a hard time holding this post. Like, regardless of them rushing you, just still try to lock that down. Yeah, I mean, if, if they're invincible in front of you, it doesn't matter, like, what sticks or pipes you hit. You know, they're going to, like, yeah, just... True stand and look at you so you might as well do something productive with your time but it's not like i should try to you know bait as much as possible to have a better uber well i mean you can walk away generally if you have your traps well they're gonna have to have use before you most like of the time speed, right yeah i mean you can play passive but you don't want to like forget what your job kind of is if you decide that like it's best that you just walk out of the uber then you can like just look to recommit, like, towards the end, and try to lock out these doors. Alternatively, you can put up passive traps, but that's not nearly as good as, like, nipping it in the bud and locking out the doors. Um, right. Yeah, lose it. You'd rather, like, have your demo stay kind of aggro and, like, take the exchange on the demo and have your scout, like, jump away and, like, play up here. Uh, so it's, like, basically they've uberated the scout and you've ubered your demo. So that your demo can stand up here and shoot stickies here, shoot stickies over here, mm -hmm. and lock up the doors. So that's kind of what you would, like, ideally do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me keep scrolling. So, okay. So now we're going to talk about pushing. Uh, does anyone have any questions about anything hold-related before we move forward? How do I shoot gun? <laughs> uh, left click. If you're a demo man, uh, you have to right click also. Um, okay, so if you're gonna push, there's same situation, or like same scenario, same four scenarios, jeez. So you 
neither of you have uber, so that's going to be a dry push. Um, generally, you're going to look to just kind of walk right and take the space. So it's going to essentially be like similar to before. Um, you want to get this soldier off of here kind of as quickly as possible and then basically fight a mid fight. So generally that involves like you can bomb from here off this and land up here. Um, you could do that with two soldiers and have them counter bomb this guy. And then you generally just want to get your scouts up here like on height. You're not really too afraid about a soldier going behind as much as you are in a mid fight. Um, so it's not as big of a deal to have your flank scout play uh, super passive as it is on a mid fight. You can have them look more aggressive. And then on demo, the kind of important uh, thing is like try to uh, kind of support your team in whatever they're doing, but you don't have to be the one to like make stuff happen necessarily. Just because of the nature of this map, soldiers can bomb a lot more freely. So what I mean by this is like uh, on most maps, you don't really want to have your soldiers initiate the fight by like committing hard. But on this map, you can because they can go so high that they're not really in danger. If they like land deep and they're, they don't have scouts ready to really deal with that. Um, then uh, this like frees up your demo. You don't have to do as much in regards to like making stuff happen. Now you can start to focus on like, okay, where can I lock down? That's going to be really inconvenient for them. Generally, that means like this crate, this roof, like all along here, like back here. If you can put a bunch of stickies in like these very key locations, that's how your team is going to win the fight and like push them out of position, essentially. Um, same idea as last time, like in a dry push, is if you take control of this left shack, like this is your win condition essentially. If you get soldiers up here, uh, you just w win because you force them out of all of the doors. Um, okay. So, next is when you don't have Uber and they do. So, this is a four man situation. So, same as before, I recommend that you kind of... It's obviously, like, puts yourself susceptible to this main push, but I recommend, like, at least trying to take Yard, because not all teams are going to risk doing this aggro push, and not all teams, like, really know about this. So you can take Yard with six people, and then uh, generally you're looking to go from the left. So there's two scenarios for how you do this four man. One of them is if they are bunkered, and one is if they're not. So if they're not bunkered, you can just bomb your demo in deep, have him initiate. Your soldiers can follow and high bomb. So generally as demo, you're looking to like go deeper than everyone else, like be a distraction, cut people off with stickies, um, and then allow your soldiers to like land and do the big damage, essentially. They can just land on whatever they're their target is, so it's the medic. You literally can kill anyone on yeah. the sack. Yeah, so then the like final piece is just getting your scout. So normally if they're in if they're in bunker you can like run right here. And you're usually okay. Especially if you've created this distraction. Um or if they're just like wherever they are, usually you can get in free through left. You're like unspotted up to here. And then you have to figure out where they are. Um, but if they're in the bunker, that kind of changes how things work. The order is slightly different. I would recommend getting your soldiers to high bomb, both of them, to high bomb and then land at this door and try to bust. And then after, like right after that's happening, you have your demo put stickies here. So you want to deny the demo this kind of location. So you bomb, and usually you want to like peel off. So if you say bomb from, let me go demo man so that I can show you what I mean.
Okay, so if you, say, bomb from here, you can, like, start to put stickies, but then, like, land somewhere else. So, this is obviously a poor example because I'm not very good. But if you, like, practice getting this down, you can, like, land over here, but put stickies in the right place. So you're not, like, forfeiting your life necessarily to, like, this play. And it allows you some space to, like, be a problem or be a threat. So they have to, like, kind of look at you because you're a demo man and you're a problem. And this gives you kind of the space to exist on your own over here, but also allows your scout to actually do stuff. So the point of the scout running is to be able to follow up on all this damage. So if the scout gets in right here, once you've put your stickies down and kind of prevented their demo and scout from existing here, you just have your scout run right in and look for the medic. Also something to be aware of as demo is the scout is usually going to be playing here and like sometimes a scout up here. Uh, usually the flank scout's going to chase those like deep bombers. Maybe the pocket scout will too, but generally like the pocket scout is going to so say he's playing on that crate, like he's going to track you even if you land like all the way over here. He's going to like follow you and look to shoot you. So that's like creating space for your scout to get in. Um Okay, does all of that make sense for how to do these four mans? Yes. Okay, cool. So, now the opposite is when you have Uber and they don't. So, there's kind of, I think, two different philosophies, so to speak, for how you do this. One would be to, like, mad rush, get in as fast as possible. And the other is going to be uh, go slow and not use the uber. So I think generally this just depends on like what your team likes and how they like to play. So I'll give examples of how to do both. So when you're going to go fast, the key principles here are going to be taking your demo and your scout. Usually you can go like here and you're going to be like relatively unspotted. And the idea is, like, as demo, you can bomb behind and cut off retreats. And the point of this is, like, your... Like, your job isn't necessarily to do damage, because soldiers are really good on this map. And it's very easy for your soldiers to follow. So if you cut people off, if you cut off their retreat, this kind of corrals players into undesirable locations and allows your soldiers to bomb deep and just land on their targets. Like, this just sets your team up for success, essentially. So, whether you take... I would recommend either going... I guess you have four options, but... Or, it's, sorry, three options. I guess you have four options. You have, like, you can bomb from here. Or you can bomb from main. From here. And same thing, land behind. Um, i grab some ammo real quick. Actually, wait. Just kidding. Um, and then obviously the two... Uh, these two doors. You can go from, like, quite far away and still be in, like, good shape to, like, cut off retreats from either of those. So those are kind of where you're going to launch from. And then as soldiers, you're just kind of looking to walk in for free uh, while your team is doing this, and then bomb. So usually that means, like, go left and just bomb off this tower. Sometimes it means go right, and, like, you can bomb off this, or bomb, like, here and jump off this and land, like, directly on top of them, essentially. So... And then finally, as like your pocket scout, you're just looking to like connect with your demo if he's in a place where he's gonna live. So, like usually, it's good to like land up here because you can cut off here, cut off here, or uh, you can kind of land like much deeper. But it's a bit risky. Obviously, if you like go all the way deep, you can just like sticky yourself off, and generally you're gonna be all right. Um. And then on the right side, like, if you're gonna land somewhere on the right... Actually, there isn't really a great place to land on the right, to be honest. You just have to kind of hope they don't go that way. Or, like, if they're gonna go that way, you can spot it early enough that you can land, like, over here. 
or like on top of this, I guess. I don't know, that's not so satisfying in my mind, but... Like a lot of times teams aren't going to be ready to leave this side, they're usually going to play over here. Um, yeah, so does anyone have any questions about the, the aggro play? I gotta go, but uh, thank you. This was very helpful. Yeah, no problem. All right, so the the non aggro, the slow push, is gonna be kind of the same as like the dry push, or you just want to get the soldier off of this roof, and then you want to fight the mid like normal. Generally, they're gonna give you more space because you have Uber, so you can just kind of force it, walk walk into them. If they don't walk away, you can just use, but. And I would recommend taking, like, two scouts on this. Uh, but if they do walk away, then you just cap the point. And same idea, if you take this high ground, you're just going to be set. Um, if you just get your soldiers up there, that's what you're after. So... Yeah, hopefully that's all kind of straightforward um, on how all of that works. Does that all make sense? I take silences, yes. Okay, cool. Alright, so the last part is gonna be if they both have, or if you both have Uber. So, generally, that's gonna look like a scout exchange. So, normally, my favorite Uber on this map, especially if you're playing like main and below, is gonna be like you take your scout, you just run up like this, and you pop right here, and you look for their medic and whoever else you get the force if you get a couple of flashes that can make this uber worth it so if you force uh so if they have to uber three people your uber is almost always going to be worth it uh if you if they have to uber two people it's generally going to be worth it but if they only have to solo then it's usually bad um because of how the uber timings work so same thing is like, or an important thing to keep in mind is like these guys spamming you. So obviously I just talked about like how important it is to lock these doors off when people are trying to get in. Um, as a team, you want to follow this Uber to the best of your ability. Um, so avoiding getting locked out and avoiding getting picked early while this Uber is happening is going to be your main goal. Usually it just involves... So, like, soldiers are going to want to play passive. Like, make sure this is not controlled. You can counterbomb this guy if there's already, like, a soldier or a scout up there. Or you can just play passive, wait for the uber to end, and then bomb. And look to kind of follow up on the post. Um, the other... You have another scout uber option, and that's going to be just, like, walking through main. So... I would recommend like walking through the center of the store as scout and medic. Generally, you're not going to get hit by both traps. Or like, there's not going to be... Como se dice? Like, if you're in the middle, you're like just far enough away from both traps. You can usually get through because your scout speed. Sometimes you, you do have to be careful about this door though. Um, other s places to be aware of traps are going to be this ledge. Like this thing, this box, like this thing. And that's pretty much all you have to worry about. I guess sometimes this thing as well. Um, but yeah, these are like all the common trap spots. Usually if you can avoid these, like then it's going to be a good uber. By the time you get like across here, like normally a scout, you just want to like jump peek this and make sure you're not going to insta-die, but then you can kind of run out and just use. So, uh, that's kind of how to do it. Does that all make sense? Okay, cool. Um, what else is there? Okay, so... Um, I also recommend you can kind of fake bomb as well. That's something to keep in mind in a lot of situations on uh, 
this map is like if you send let me switch to soldier it's really easy to bail out of these bombs like you can make yourself look very important and then uh like jump away or uh strafe away i should say oh, geez. so like for example if you go off this like you can just sort of like curl away you don't have to commit to these bombs even uh Like, if you go like this, you still have a lot of options for, like, getting away. And then the point of following... Sorry. The point of doing these fake bombs is that, so that your other soldier can, like, get in for free while they're looking at you. And then you follow, obviously. So, if you can coordinate this, like, your team is going to be, like, very well prepared to play this map. Okay. So, and that's useful in, like, a ton of different bombing situations, so that's something to think about. Um, okay, that's, that's pretty much my entire notes. I don't think I have anything more that I, like, have written down to talk about. So, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer those for the next, like, 10-15 minutes.